Kenya is considered as food insecure with a high number of population living on food relief. Millions of Kenyans facing hunger, the government has began the distribution of relief food to the more than 14 counties affected by drought. The food insecurity has been attributed to several factors that include frequent droughts in most parts of the country and high cost of farm inputs. Climate change is worsening the problem with the emerging of new insect pests and diseases such as stem borers, locusts, fall armyworm and maize lethal necrosis disease MLN. Stem borers are known to reduce maize production in several countries in Africa. For example, in Kenya, stem borers reduce maize production by an average of 13% or 4.4 million bags of maize equivalent to the normal yearly amount of maize imported by Kenya for animal feed. The fall armyworm, on the other hand, is a new and devastating pest to maize production in Kenya, destroying over 25 million bags of maize in Kenya each year. It is projected that in 2025, maize demand in Kenya will be 60 metric bags per year, which will have a direct impact on available arable land. The livestock and crop production will therefore need to be dramatically increased to meet this need. The Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization, CULRO, has taken a number of interventions in conducting research in use of modern biotechnology in farming to address the emerging challenges towards food security and nutrition. CULRO is the national organization that supports the agriculture and livestock sector by developing technologies, innovations, and management practices through research to support the sector. Um, as far as uh, maize uh, breeding or maize research is concerned, I would say 90% or more of the maize varieties that are grown in the country originated from Calro one way or another. And as you are aware that Ugali is the staple in this country, uh, maize research is a very important component of Calro research. Over the years, uh, Calro has developed over 200 varieties and more are in the pipeline. And these varieties have different attributes depending on one, the ecology of the areas where they are growing. One of the institutes of CALRO, of course, is the Biotechnology Research Institute. Biotechnology is a modern science. And uh, to be able to increase our production, to be able to overcome the challenges of climate change, emerging new disease and pests, there is need to use modern technology. Modern biotechnology tools can eliminate some of the production constraints like pest infestation, diseases, drought, and low nutritional value, hence improve agricultural productivity and enhance food security and nutrition. The Water Efficient Maize for Africa project has been running in several African countries since 2008 with the objective of developing testing and deploying drought tolerant and insect protected maize varieties to farmers and the objective of that project was mainly to develop drought resistant pest resistant maize varieties to be able to increase production by at least 20 to 35 percent this uh, program was funded by bill and melinda gates howard buffer uh, foundation and USAID. In Kenya, 76 conventional drought-tolerant varieties have been officially released for use by farmers. The Wema project was very successful because as we are talking, close to 80 uh, varieties were released. Several of them have been taken and are currently being grown by farmers. And some of the products of the Wema project are still being used to develop uh, more characteristics which are suitable for climate change and emerging diseases and pests. After success with the conventional varieties under WEMA, a new phase of the project, now called TELA, was initiated in 2018, focusing more on commercialization of the insect pest resistant and drought tolerant maize. TELA project is a public pri uh, private partnership project uh, where it is working towards uh, 
initiating the commercialization of the transgenics. These are the GMO uh, improved maize varieties, which will uh, um, contribute towards the food security in this country. Terra project comes from the word uh, to Terra, which means a uh, double shield. Uh, the reason is because uh, it is building from the uh, the big work that was done by the Water Efficient Maize for Africa project, where over 70 uh, improved maize varieties were released, and uh, which some already uh, with the farmers. So what uh, the Terra project is doing, <coughs> it is just adding now another guard against the insect pest and mainly the stem borer and also soon it's also going to bring in the fall armyworm and also the drought tolerance. Caldro and partners have been conducting research on BT maize branded Tela maize which is an option for farmers to increase yields and reduce productivity cost. Project uh, as I said is a partnership project where we have the public uh, which is CARO which is the implementing uh, partner in the country and it works together with the CIMIT, uh, AATF, uh, the Bayer company, and it's also been implemented in uh, Uganda, Tanzania, Ethiopia, Nigeria, Mozambique, and South Africa. So the main objective of the Terra project is to bring uh, to avail the transgenic maize, which are the insect protected uh, and uh, drought tolerant maize to our farmers where the farmers will benefit by reducing the cost of using the insecticide or the, the pesticide in control of the insect pest. And also the farmers will also be guaranteed of uh, a harvest when there is a uh, moderate drought. And on top of that, the yields also will be, also be higher by 10 to 15 percent due to the contribution of the insect pest resistant uh, uh, gene and also 10% uh, 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 because of the, uh, because of the, uh, of the, the drought. The project utilized both conventional and transgenic technology. The transgenic approach includes use of BT gene for protection of maize against stem borer pests and a DT gene for conferring drought tolerance to maize. BT maize has that potential to be part of our food security uh, processes. Not that it's a magic bullet to give us food security, but it's going to play a major role. One of the things that we have in, uh, found out is that apart from being safe to human beings, it's also safe for the environment. It, it reduces the amount of chemicals that we use in the process of maize production by uh, a big percentage, we have the challenge of aflatoxin. And we know an entry point that has been created by insects into the maze is potentially an uh, entry point for mycotoxins, the fungus that are causing, uh, producing the mycotoxins. And this one is affecting our human health. When we have BT maize as part of our food chain, it means then that we have reduced the openings by the insects and then we have reduced the contamination. Another thing that we would wish to bring to the attention of everyone is the safety for our use. The fact that BT maize kills the insect doesn't mean it's going to kill us at all. The reason is because the insect gut and our gut, they are totally different. The insect gut at has an alkaline environment our guts have acidic environment. For this protein, the cry protein, to be converted to a toxin, it requires alkaline media. And then number two, the insect has the enzymes that are able to digest this protein into a toxin, and that toxin is called delta endotoxin. We don't have that enzyme in our system. That means we cannot digest this cry protein into a toxin at all. It doesn't occur in us. It passes as a protein. But for the insect, it has the enzyme that is able to digest this cry protein and convert it into delta endotoxin. And what it does, it binds now into the midgut of the insect and it destroys that. The insect pest uh, protected uh, maize varieties are expected to bring on the table or to the farmers uh, 40 to 50 percent 
uh, yield advantage that is in terms of grain uh, and this is what we are saying they are the BT maize and also the drought tolerant uh, maize which we are calling the DT they are expected to bring 10 to 15 percent yield advantage under moderate uh, uh, drought. Despite the main focus being stem borer, the researchers noticed that the BT maize was not severely infested with the fall armyworm, which is currently a serious pest for maize farmers all over the country. As you can see, this is the, the reef damage uh, by the fall armyworm, although we introduced the stem borer. But you can see we didn't introduce the fall armyworm, but uh, we, we left it to come naturally. So this is natural infestation by the fall armyworm, and you can see the damage. You can see, you can see even, even, even in the honesty, there is a lot of damage. And also, but uh, if you look at the, the one that is, has the gene, you can see there is no damage at all. So the leaf is very, is very clean, so no holes. Uh, the plant, if you look at it again, uh, the plant height is also high. This is tall because it was not damaged, but you can see this one because of the damage, it is a bit short. So those are the effect and that's how the yield that is, is normally reduced when we have the insect. All the confined field trials were conducted under the WEMO phase. Therefore, the TELA project was to proceed to commercialization phase. The, the trials that are being conducted under TELA, so of course they started from the CFT, that is the confined field trial. This is where we generated all the, uh, the, the, the research data, testing on the, on the potential of this variety to protect against the stem borer and which we also we noted that the variety has also minimal damage by the fall annual. Uh, from there, the varieties will move to uh, other sites where in this case uh, we'll be targeting all the agroecological zones and uh, Kenya is, has six agroecological zones running all the way from the coast to the road that is the dry part to the coffee region all the way to the uh, Embu and uh, the Mount Kenya region and then going to the Kitare and then all the way to Kakamega. So we have to test all these varieties in these regions because we also have two different pests, that is two different uh, pests of stem borer. So that is the, the spotted uh, stem borer, which is more common in the dry and the warm areas, that is the, 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 the coffee region and the dry areas. And also we have the Busiora fusca, which is African stem borer, which is also more common in the high altitudes, that is the Kakamega, Embu, and also Kitari. And in addition to that, we also need to identify which is the best per variety and doing where, because we want to sell a given variety uh, 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 across uh, in a given region where it is giving its optimum or its maximum grain yield. In order to create awareness of the benefits of the BT maize, these demos were opened for different groups in a seeing is believing visit led by Calro and partners. These groups include policy makers, regulators, county representatives, religious leaders, farmers, students, and among others. The reason why we bring people to this trial is so that we can demystify. Because you, you are only afraid of what you don't know. But if you know it, you see it, you can see it perform, you can see it, uh, it there is nothing unusual about it, despite uh, the Fr Frankenstein pictures that are posted all over the place. I think the fear comes because people don't know. And I think with this demonstration activities, we try to expose as many stakeholders as possible to the technology so that we can remove the fear. But that is normal. I think there was a time when we also struggled to adopt mobile phones, but now everybody <laughs> has one. There were some, even, even in the university, there were professors who struggled to even adopt computers or to teach with PowerPoint. Now everybody does. So I think it's a question of time, and I think the time is near. As a religious person, I want to tell all Kenyans, all believers, to shun any political intervention and this, you know, man's linking on this product. Because even the same seeds that we import, that goes to the millers, it is already GMO, but the millers don't tell us that it is GMO. The means we import from Brazil, the means we import from South Africa, all these are not labeled GMO, and we feed on them, consume them in a the supermarket, and they leave the barn on the shelf. After all, 
which is scientific, you know, proof of the government shown to show that it has effect on human beings. It is a purely stereotype and they're trying to poison people's minds so that they remain in hunger so that they can keep on importing food when they can produce locally. The next step that we are going to do as soon as we get the license is to test these materials in the national performance trials. This is the first step towards commercialization of any crop variety in Kenya. So we get this one tested and um, after the testing then it will be the, the decision will be made by the regulatory bodies which will be CAFIS looking at the performance of the BT versus non-BT and also the other, the other the, the, the NBA will also be able to give a commercial the, the license or the approval for commercial of, of what is called environmental release and for, for commercial use. When you come to the national performance trials this is where now the varieties they are sent out to evaluate on their value on growing them and also in their use because by the end of the day they must have value to the farmers and also to the country in terms of the food the people who are involved in the, uh, the npt or the national performance trial is this is actually lies in the mandate of the kenya plant health inspectorate service however it also took, does this one together with the partners and this the partners include like caro who are also the research body and any other body, anybody else who has some interest. In this case, we are also doing together with the National Biosafety Authority because they have the one have the mandate of uh, regulating all the transgenic or the GMO uh, uh, products. And also, we'll also bring in the other regulators who also uh, have a role in this. And for example, we'll have to bring in NEMA because once they are released, they are going to the environment and NEMA will also need to know whether they have any effect when they go to the environment. At the end of the national performance trials, the team is optimistic that the ban will be lifted to enable farmers access these BT maize varieties to improve their yields and reduce the production costs, which will increase their income, hence improve livelihoods. There are so many advantages of that protected maize seed because it has no infections, there is no pesticide which has been used, and at the end, people will get enough food. If they grow it, there will be no chances of uh, contracting uh, cancer because of the chemicals which are used to protect the worms for the other kinds of maize, and people will also remain with the money in their pockets because uh, pesticides are very expensive. So we, 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 we request the government to support this project and release the seeds to the general public so that we may not have famine in Kenya because uh, maize is staple food. Yes, the breeders and the stakeholders and scientists have worked to spend a lot of resources in generating this good product that can assist the insect pest and more so the stem borer and also have an advantage over the fall almond. But we still have that challenge that we know very well in the country we still have a GMO ban where we cannot sell or uh, we cannot introduce or produce and consume any GMO product. So the question the breeders have is that yes the farmers are losing, the country is losing over 25 million bags of maize due to these two pests combined. And if you calculate that one into shillings, it is over 50 billion shillings. So for how long are our farmers going to continue losing this and yet there is a technology that is ready for or that there is a technology that can overcome these challenges. So if we are doing the traditional uh, using the traditional research methods and expect uh, different results, we'll be cheating ourselves. So to be able to meet the challenges of the future and the current, we need to use modern uh, biotechnology. For more information on Telemaze project, visit our website www.calro.org or email info at calro.org. Telemaze, an option for farmers to increase yields and reduce production costs.